let's go straight away into this specific model that we want to do, which is the expected credit loss model. For the expected credit loss model, yesterday I already laid the foundation to say probability of default times not given default times exposure at default will give us our expected credit loss. Now, the sincere truth is this. Expected credit loss is actually just a part of the credit loss. So credit loss is actually equals to expected credit loss and unexpected credit loss. Now, the one we made impairment provision for is only the expected credit loss. However, we did every credit loss or we did every credit risk. There's an expected portion and an unexpected portion. The unexpected portion is not catered for from an accounting standpoint because to an extent, there are many other um, um, models that are involved in developing that one. Accountants don't cater for that and it is not within the scope of IFRS. So the one we are only catering for is just the expected credit loss. So let's drill down into the major things here, which is the probability of default, the loss given default, and the exposure at default. In a summary, probability of default is basically saying, what is the probability that an obligor, an obligor will not fulfill his obligation? For example, I gave a product to Mr. A or a service. He's supposed to pay in the next 30 days, between zero and 30 days. He has not paid now. Or even at that point in time, when you are giving him that service, what is the probability that he will not pay? What is the probability that he would default between zero and 30 days? That is what probability of default measures. Loss given default, however, looks at the ratio of loss as a result of the fact that the obligor will not pay the way he's supposed to pay. For example, the obligor has now decided to say that, okay, you know what? I'm supposed to pay you in 30 days, but I can't pay you in 30 days. I'll pay you in 180 days. As a result of the fact that the person did not pay you in 30 days, but paid you everything in 180 days, there's a loss. As a result of the fact that there's some level of default, that is what is called loss given default. Not that the person did, did not pay at all. Not that the person did not fulfill his obligation, but he fulfilled later than the time he's supposed to fulfill. That is what loss given default measures. Exposure at default is the amount that the entity could lose if somebody defaults. So for example, as at 31 December, how much are people owing you? 10 Naira, 10 dollars, 10 CDs. That 10 is your exposure. Why? Because that 10 is the amount they might not pay again. The one you have collected cannot be in default again. But the one that you have not collected, that they might not pay, is actually what exposure at default measures. Now, for us to be able to actually have an ECL figure, we need to model each of these components. Why are we modeling it? The reason why we have to model it is because what the standard requires us to use as ECL is either 12 month ECL. 12 month ECL means the ECL as a result of the fact that there will be default between now and 12 months into the future. Or lifetime ECL, which looks at the default or ECL as a result of the fact that there will be default between now and when the person is supposed to pay. If, for example, it's a loan and it's a five year loan between now and the next five years. So if you look at the two, it is all a function of the future rather than the past. What we were using before under IS39 was called incurred loss model. So it was majorly as a result of what has happened in the past. But this one is looking at what will happen in the future. So ECL that you are using is either 12 month ECL or lifetime ECL. You, you determine what it will be based on the significant increase in credit risk or not. So it is always about the future. That is why we will have to calculate or model what the future will look like. So we're going to start with probability of default. How do we model probability of default? Now, I've put forward a formula here. This is the formula that we are going to use. Now, it is saying before I even enter into public, uh, um, probability of default, our, the ECL is always within yes. it. Please go ahead. Somebody was saying something. I'm listening, please. Uh, I don't know. 
I don't know whether you can enlarge your your screen or what you, you are sharing so that uh, it looks tiny so that we'll be able to read it. Yeah. Is it tiny on everybody's system? I think it's fine. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I, I think what I think is is the is the view type you are using, sir. I think it's your view from where you are. The view on um, what do you call it? On um, Zoom. The way you have done the view. Okay. Let me see. I'll, I'll check on. Okay. Yeah, it's I'll view. check on this, sir. Yeah, you can enlarge the view so that you can see. I think you are minimizing okay. the view or something. Yeah, you can just enlarge it. So let's go on. So the expected credit loss while calculating the probability of default time EAD and LGD. Remember, let me begin to actually type because we are going to do a lot of statistics today. That one I can tell you. So if we are calculating ECL, I said the ECL could either be 12 months or lifetime. So what is ECL for 12 months then? How do we calculate ECL 12 months? Yeah, ECL 12 months is equal to PG for 12 months multiplied by LGD for 12 months multiplied by EAD for 12 months. So also ECL for lifetime is equals to PG for lifetime multiplied by LGD for lifetime multiplied by EAD for lifetime. Now, that is actually what 12 month ECL is and what lifetime ECL is. Then the next question will now be, how do we calculate PD for 12 months? Now, while calculating all these 12 months and lifetime, we must also factor in, we must also factor in scenarios. Why are we factoring in scenarios? Because when we are actually projecting into the future, we'll be using some forward-looking information that are, we'll be talking about the future for us to model the future. But the question will now be, those forward-looking information that we are going to be using, is it, will they always happen the way we think they will happen? If they will not happen the way they will th we think they will happen, that means we need to create scenarios. The standard recommends that at the minimum, we create three scenarios at the minimum. So that means at the minimum, we are going to be having scenarios as I teach us here for this. If it were that what we think will happen, will happen. We'll be having upside. Upside is that if things get better than expected, I will be having downside. Downside is that if things go the other way. Eh? So those are the scenarios we must create, even while creating the 12 month ECL and the lifetime ECL. Yeah, we need to factor in this into what we will be doing. Now we are going to do this real life and we're going to start from the scratch.